here it is in the case. And uh, look at that. And that's the cross that came with it. So uh, it's a rare church copy, Latin text. Uh, it's actually in pretty good shape. Anyways, along with that Bible, he had... Uh, Some days living here in northern Alberta, it's like living in a snow globe. Uh, rather beautiful day. It's a balmy, like, you know, two degrees. Uh, snow is coming down pretty good, though. Uh, we have a few errands to run today. One being to, uh, we have to zip over to Alex's shop, Curiosity Inc. I have something I need to drop off for him. And he has a couple items that I'd like to look at as well. So we are going to slowly and carefully make our way over to Alex's shop and uh, have a chat with him. Come on, let's go. Almost to Alex's place. It's a little mucky and uh, a bit slippy slidey here and there. But, uh, you know, you go slow, you can, uh, you can get there safe and sound. Uh, it must seem like madness, I would think, to uh, to some folks that, you know, we live in this environment. <laughs> like my uh, my classmate uh, back in Telluride in the fall, April, I'm talking to you in Texas. I wish you were here. I'd put you behind the driver's seat here, see how you made out. I know, you'd do a great job. Anyways, we're pulling up in front of Alex's. We will, uh... oh, I should tell you, why are we going to Alex's? Well, if you recall some time ago, uh, in a previous episode, he had come to the shop with a book uh, about Harmer Pratt. And this book was very, very old. And uh, it was fun. We had a look at it. We uh, kind of sorted out what uh, might be going on with it. And uh, when we were doing that, one of the pages had been set aside on, on the bench as we examined. And um, it got left behind. So uh, I actually came across it just the other day. Uh, and I'm going to return it to him because obviously uh, we want each and every complete piece of the book that we can find to uh, to go with the original uh, text. Okay, let's uh, let's pull into Alex's and uh, and have a chat with him. Well, we're going to wait for Alex to finish up with a customer. In the meantime, we will have a look around at his lovely store and see what we can find if there's anything of interest. Sure, there is. Ah, uh, yes. Big, one of my favorite movies. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, big little books. I remember my dad telling me about these. I do have a few in the shop. Oh, look at this. Beautiful book press. I'm gonna have to check about that one. I love guitars. I don't need any more, though. No wonder Alex is one of my favorite people. Plays John Prine in his shop. If you've never had a chance to uh, visit Alex's shop, I would suggest you, uh, you know, take a day or two. <laughs> Come down, have a look around. There is literally something for everyone here. Look at that. I love the graphics on these uh, old movie posters. Look at this chair. Oh my gosh. I believe that's made from buffalo horn. All sorts of art, everything from uh, jet planes to uh, what do they call those merry-go-round horses? Yeah, horses, I guess. Beautiful, and it just keeps going back. Last time I was here, we were in this room, and these shelves here were full of books. 
and uh, Alex and I managed to make a, a deal. That turned out really well. Maybe we can do something today. Okay, Alex is freed up, so we're going to uh, see if we can remember where this piece came out of on the uh, the Harmer Spratt book. So, Alex, here we are in, yes. the, in the shop. Good to see you again, my Good friend. Good to see you, too. Um, so, this is the piece that uh, I found in, uh, on my workbench, um, and it belongs back in the Harmer Spratt book. So I'll... Yeah, it does indeed. It's talking about an island of oaks and buried treasure. <laughs> Oh, my favorite TV yeah, and there's show. there's a treasure map on the other side here. No, I'm, I'm sure it's probably just, um, you know, medical instructions or something. But you get a lot of poetry and things in this book, too. But that's yeah. a neat piece. It's nice that you found it and were able to put it back to to its proper home. Well, yeah, yeah. No, it, it belongs in the book for sure. And uh, and do we have an update on that book? Is there anything going on with it? Um, well, I'm just waiting to hear back from Sotheby's or any. Yeah. I've reached out to a couple auction houses to deal in historic books. But... Uh -huh. So okay. far, the the sellers in the U.S. are interested in primarily American history, and all the, though yeah. that mentions the Revolution and all that, it's more from an English perspective. Right. Um, right. So you have to find the right thing. And I think I've discovered this. It says right at the top, poison for destroying rats. So that's what this is for. Um, so who knows? You're very skilled at reading that uh, oh, this old handwriting. I struggle with that. Different quantity of spring water to make a above into a dry paste. Yeah, that's instructions on making rat poison. <laughs> So thanks. <laughs> well, there you this go. This is what they used to kill rats in the 1700s. Okay. Well, maybe we'll uh, we'll uh, look at that and uh, write it up and copyright it. We'll get rich selling rat. Poison. Off a of rat poison, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, no problem. One of the things I noticed in Alex's episode the other day um, about the Bible I had walked into. Well, actually, we should go have a quick look at that Bible. Um, here it is in the case, and. Uh, Look at that, and that's the cross that came with it. So uh, it's a rare church copy, Latin text. Uh, it's actually in pretty good shape. Anyways, along with that Bible, he had uh, a photograph of Father Lacombe in St. Albert. Uh, as it turns out, one of the things I volunteer for in St. Albert is the, uh, uh, I serve on the, uh, the board of the Arts and Heritage Foundation, which oversees both the museum, the art gallery, and all the heritage sites in St. Albert. So, this is the photo. Here, I'm going to do this a different way. So this is the photo, um, and that's Father Lacombe in the middle. And it's hard to make out. It does say St. Albert. It says uh, a Jubilee something something, and I'm not sure if that's 1909. Um, must be. Anyways, we'll, we'll have to do a little digging on that. Um, and I'm going to see if uh, the folks at our museum in St. Albert might have an interest in this photograph. This part of the building right here uh, is the chapel, which is still intact. Can't quite get to those stairs, because you can see there's a little bit of snow here. And uh, that cross, I, if I recall, is made out of an original piece of the first uh, wooden bridge that was built across the Sturgeon River, which is just over the hill and at the foot of it. So this is the Bishop's Palace. Gorgeous old building. All wood, except for the brick. We've heard back from uh, the folks at the museum regarding that photo that uh, Alex had uh, shown us in the shop. And uh, fortunately, we're not able to use it. Um, but I really want to thank Alex for his help with that and, uh, and having so much cool stuff in his shop. Um, and I would really encourage folks to, uh, if you have a shop like uh, Alex's in your town or your community or a bookstore, um, go support your local uh, brick and mortar outlets because uh yeah you can shop online and it's convenient but man there's nothing like going to an actual store that you can pick stuff up and look at it and smell it and uh hold it in your hands it's uh it's a whole another experience so uh uh i've uh, decided that i can't get to the front but this is the uh actual building here in saint albert where that photograph was taken uh it's called the bishop's palace 
and uh, it is currently vacant, but it is an absolutely gorgeous example of uh, some of St. Albert's local history, and uh, we're very proud of it. There it is. Thanks for watching this episode of Bailey the Bookman, and uh, we will see you very soon.